I can't believe that it's already the end of 2022. So at the time of filming this video, it's three days before Christmas and yeah, it's time to have our annual wrap up of the year. I'm going to talk in this video about my top 10 things that I've seen and played this year and just talk a little bit about where the channel has gone in the last 12 months. So with it being this time of year, it's time to start winding down now for Christmas and for the festive season. As a self-employed musician, this is pretty much the only kind of real break I get during the year is this kind of slight run up to Christmas and then the time between Christmas and New Year. That's really my only major downtime every year, but that's kind of part of the job that I accepted when I started doing this for a living. So 2022 has been very busy. It's probably been the busiest year that I've ever had since I went self-employed about six years ago and then even more so since I started doing YouTube about three years ago. I've just gotten consistently busier every year which is great. I'm incredibly incredibly grateful and thankful for where my career is right now and that in a big part is because of you guys that watch these videos and get involved on the channel as well. So thank you guys for keeping this channel going. I actually started the channel not that long before the lockdowns in 2020. So I kind of started YouTube maybe like 2018, but I didn't really have much time to put into it. So I made a few videos and then they kind of just got lost in the ether as I was really busy with things. But then at the start of 2020, I was able to allocate more time to it thanks to Andy Ferris, the guitar geek. He kind of inspired me to really push on with this YouTube thing. And really it was just like a side thing to kind of act as a creative outlet for myself to talk about the things I was interested in. And hopefully if, you know, find a few people out there who were also interested in the same things as me. And really I was already doing YouTube as a freelancer for a couple of different channels, making educational content. And he was the one who convinced me to start my own channel up properly. And then obviously you guys all came along for the ride. So thank you for getting the channel to where it is today. Okay, so let's recap on what's happened in 2022. So at the start of the year, it was just all systems go. Get straight back into the new year with the gear demos. There's been a lot of gear demos on the channel this year. Maybe not as many as I would have liked to have posted, but that's because I've been on the road a lot this year. A lot of road dates came up that were kind of last minute, which did take me out of the studio for a while. I know over the summer period, I think there was one point where I was home for like, you know, maybe eight or nine days in an entire month. So it's been a crazy year for travel and everything else as well. I've been on the road a lot, so haven't made as many gear demos as I wanted to. Did manage to make a lot though. I did manage to get quite a few in. So there's been a lot of gear demos. Uh, I went to 42 Gear Street. That was great. Obviously, you guys have seen the content that I posted from that. That was amazing as always. Always a big thanks to Henning for having me along. It's the third time I've been now and it just gets better every time. I love going out there just to see everyone. I also travel a lot for gigs. As some of you guys know, you've seen a few of my travel vlogs and live sort of conceptual videos where I've done different things on the road. And this year was really busy for live shows. I think I'm, I haven't counted, but I've definitely done in excess of probably a hundred gigs this year, without a doubt. The summer period was insanely busy. At that point I was playing in a corporate band doing weddings and functions and that kind of stuff. And at one point we were doing like four or five shows a week all around the country, which was really busy. Come to the end of the year, I've now joined a new group doing theatres and that's great as well because we're traveling a couple of times a week playing sold out shows to, you know, eight, nine hundred people, a thousand people plus every single night, which is fantastic. And the good thing with that show is it's mainly Friday and Saturdays. So moving now into 2023, I'm actually going to be home a lot more in the week, which means more time for YouTube. Also, in 2022, I started writing and creating content for Music Radar, which was insane. Music Radar, for anyone who doesn't know, is a company that kind of owns a few different magazine publications as well, Total Guitar being one of them. I grew up reading Total Guitar. The first ever guitar magazine I bought was Total Guitar in March 2003, and it had Justin Hawkins on the cover. I even I might even still have it here somewhere, and that's pretty much 20 years ago now. So to team up with those guys and create educational content has been awesome. I never thought I'd ever get to work with those guys, so that's been really cool. All of the educational content goes on their website, but I also create supplementary videos, which you guys have probably already seen, because a lot of them are on this channel. And the other big thing that happened to me this year, which some of you guys may not know unless you follow me over on Instagram, is that in September this year, I started working with Lick Library. Lick Library are a huge, huge resource in the guitar education world. 
I now shoot regular videos for their YouTube channel as well. That is an incredible honor for me because you look at the names of some of the guys that have worked for Lick Library and currently do work for Lick Library, it's absolutely astonishing and mind-blowing for me to even contemplate how my name is even on the same list as some of these people. My good friend Jamie Humphreys was one of the main guys at Lick Library for a long time. My friend Sam Bell currently works there. You know, you've had Guthrie Govan work in there. Andy James has done stuff for them. The list is just ridiculous. And somehow I managed to get my name onto that list as well. And there is one key player behind the scenes that was really a big facilitator in making that happen. So a big thank you to him. He knows who he is if he's watching this video. So yeah, that's 2022 in a nutshell. So yeah, it's been busy. It's been amazing. I've had a great time, but now I am very, very tired and I'm looking forward to two weeks off with no work. I just can't wait to have a couple of days now where I just switch off and do absolutely nothing. But once again, a huge, unbelievably huge thanks to all of you guys for being on this journey with me, for making this happen, for supporting the channel through everything. I just can't thank you guys enough. So I'm going to talk now about my top 10 pieces of gear that I've tried out this year. Some of the things are currently in the studio and I currently own and other things that were only sent to me on loan that I don't have. I'm going to put clips up of all these things for the video as well. So we're going to kick off number one, PJD Guitars St. John Standard. This thing I got my hands on back in the summer. I think it was around about July this thing arrived. I had wanted a PJD guitar for ages. I absolutely fell in love with this brand when I first tried this stuff at Henning's place at 42 Gear Street last year. So in 2021 Gear Street. And yeah, since then I was just kind of fixated that I need to own one of these things one day. And through, you know, doing a bunch of other videos for them and the relationship I've developed with those guys, it's finally happened. So yeah, a huge thanks to Lee, Jens and all the guys at PJD for this thing arriving with me. I have taken this thing out a lot since it's arrived. Uh, you know, you guys have already seen it in a bunch of videos. It's been gigged a lot. I've already put some battle scars on it and, you know, worn it in a little bit. I love this guitar. This is definitely an instrument that is designed by people who really know how to make good guitars. If you've never tried a PJD, I would highly suggest getting out and trying one. There's not a huge amount of stores in the UK that do stock them, but if you are near a store that does, I would strongly suggest trying one of these out. I genuinely think these guys are going to be one of the biggest brands in the world in just a few years' time. The stuff they are putting out for the prices they do is just insane. This thing comes in at just under two grand in the UK, which is a lot of money. But when you put this up against other guitars in that same price range, it's really hard to see how this thing can be that affordable because this thing performs like it should be twice that price. So yeah, PGD St. John Standard. This is one of my favorite pieces of gear for this year. My second favorite piece of gear is a big one. And it's actually an app, which you saw me lifting up at the start of the video. And it's this thing, the Blackstar St. James 6L6. This thing is genuinely the amp that I've always wanted my entire life without even realizing it. And, you know, it's new to the Blackstar range. It only came out in the summer this year. This thing has become my go-to amp for most applications. So if you watch my other videos, you'll see me mention this thing quite a lot. I talk about this amp all the time. It's used in most videos. And now it's also my gigging amp. So this actually travels all around the country with me. Every single night I use this on stage, either a combination of mic and the speaker up or using the cab rig out in the back. It's actually still got some gold confetti on it from the last show as well. So the last gig we did before Christmas, we had these big confetti cannons go off and there's some confetti so I'll leave that on top of the amp until next year but yeah this thing this thing really blew me away within I think like an hour of this thing arriving I literally contacted my friend at Blackstar to let him know that they'd sent me my new favorite amp this thing I think is going to be really hard to top so 
This is probably an amp you're going to be hearing and seeing me talk about for quite a while. Unless black stuff, I know where to make this thing even better than it already is. But for what I want from an amp, this literally gives me everything. It's got a great clean sound. It's loud enough. It's got a ton of headroom. The clean sound is nice and kind of tight and percussive. It's got a nice chimey but warm sound. It's just, yeah, for me, it's absolutely perfect. It takes pedals well. Literally the perfect amp for me. Literally everything I need. And if I do want to, which I don't often, it does have a lot of gain on tap. So I can go quite gainy with this thing. I personally don't use a ton of gain, but it has it in the tank. <laughs> I'm going to talk about something that I don't actually own, which is the MXR Duke of Tone. So I have an Analog Man King of Tone, which I absolutely love, but the Duke of Tone is MXR's version of half of that circuit or the Analog Man Prince of Tone. So I had the pedal back in the summer on loan from the guys at MXR in the UK. What a fantastic pedal. I really need to get my hands on one to actually just own it because it was so good. Probably one of the, my favorite overdrive pedals that I've tried this year. I mean, going into it, I knew I was going to like it because I like the King of Tone and I've been using that for a few years now. So I kind of knew the Duke of Tone was going to be good, but yeah, they nailed it. I mean, for the price that it's selling for, you can get that Analog Man, King of Tone, Prince of Tone kind of vibe, take it out with you on the road and you don't have to worry about it kind of going missing or being stolen because even though it sounds like the real thing, it's not an expensive boutique pedal that is incredibly rare. And that's the whole reason I want one because I do take my King of Tone out on the road with me but I do worry sometimes, you know, if it gets broke or if it goes missing, you know, God forbid that would ever happen. But I don't want that to happen because I waited four years for it to be built and I don't want to wait another four years to get a replacement. So getting a Duke of Tone would be great for me because I can literally replace my kind of rare King of Tone with something I don't mind taking out on the road. And if it gets broke, it gets broke. It's a £160 pedal. I don't mind that because it's easy enough to replace. Uh, obviously, I don't have that here to hold in my hand and show you. So here's a clip from it. Sticking on the overdrive theme, Red 7 Amplification Alchemy Overdrive. This thing, I mean, yeah, this thing really blew me away when I made a video for this. I love this overdrive. It's, right, I don't want to say this is a tube screamer because it's not a tube screamer, but it can do that tube screamery type thing. The way that I remember explaining this in the video that I did for this, which you can see in the top corner, and there's there'll be links to all the product videos down below as well. The way I remember describing this is that it's kind of like a Tube Screamer, but it's not a Tube Screamer. So it it does that low to medium gain sound really well. And we can make it sound a bit Tube Screamery, but this has way more low end, a much kind of crisper top end. It's, I guess, like kind of like a Tube Screamer without the intense mid hump. It's that kind of vibe. It's basically a great low gain overdrive 
there's a couple of different things like you can go hard clipping or soft clipping. There's a fat switch. You can actually put the boost, which is independently switchable before or after the drive side as well. Great pedal. Check out the video on this thing. Red 7 Amplification. They're a small team over in Italy making really good stuff. I've actually gigged this a bunch as well. I absolutely love this. <laughs> Next up, another guitar that you guys have seen a bunch of times, but I've not talked about that much. There's a reason for that, and we're going to be talking about it a lot next year. This is my custom T from LT Custom Guitars. So my buddy Lewis, you've probably seen Lewis in a few other videos we've made together. He built me this guitar this year. So this project started probably around about maybe February or March, I want to say. It was very early in the year because I got the first iteration of this around about June, the first time I actually got what the kind of almost finished version of this. I remember going to Lewis's workshop in about April to do the neck carve. So this started out where I was telling Lewis that I was looking for my dream Telecaster and Lewis was looking to launch a line of Telecaster guitars. So this was essentially one of two prototypes. So there's this one that he built for me, and there's another one that he has that he takes to shows. And the whole idea was to kind of see how this line would work and how we could kind of build this line, keep the price pretty affordable. I think Lewis is selling these for, I think it's like 1700 with a case, which for, you know, a, a semi-custom built guitar is amazing. This one was built to my spec, but the ones you can order from Lewis are going to be kind of choose specs from a preset list of things. My spec was Swamp Ash body, really fat neck, roasted maple, flamed roasted maple fingerboard with a seven and a quarter inch radius, which was the burden of Lewis's existence for the last few months for reasons I won't go into in this video. We did document the whole process as well. So there's going to be an extended length video on how this guitar came about as well. This, I mean, you guys have seen it in a few videos already, but this is probably one of the coolest things I've had this year because it was built for me. It even has my logo on the back of the headstock, which is nice. It's a nice touch. It's kind of like a vintage spec telly with a few modern kind of tweaks. Obviously, you're going to be hearing a lot more about this in the new year as well. I haven't made the dedicated video for this yet, but this has been used in a bunch of other videos. So here's how it sounds in action. <laughs> Next up is the Berman Guitars Solar. I don't have this one here. I wish I had it here because that guitar was incredible. So Berman Guitars are headed up by a guy called Nick Berman. He is a fantastic luthier. You should really check out the video I made on his guitar called the Solar. I genuinely love that thing. I kind of miss it. I was really sad when he came to collect it, but at the same time, when I had it, this is one of those things that only a guitar player will understand, but I did try to not play it too much because I didn't want to bond with it because I knew if I bonded with it, I wouldn't want it to go back and I couldn't afford it. So it had to go back. But yeah, what a great guitar. Thankfully, that guitar did go to one of my subscribers. So one of my subscribers was watching that video and he then reached out and actually bought that guitar from Nick. So that guitar now lives in the States. What a fantastic instrument that is. 
Nick is a great builder. Please check out his videos. Please check out what he does. Check out that guitar. I'll put the link for that down below. He's making some incredible stuff. So, you know, you should support these great upcoming small luthiers. Same with LT Custom Guitars that built me my telly. There are some incredible guys on this circuit who are these up and coming and smaller companies and they're making stuff that can easily rival the big boys at a fraction of the cost. So here's how the solar sounds. <laughs> Next up, we've got a bass. So this is the Harley Benton Enhanced uh, MJ5EB, I think is the number. It's jazz bass, it's the Enhanced series. So this is kind of Harley Benton's top of the range stuff, but it's still only 300 pounds. So this came about because the theater show that I joined, there's actually a segment of the show where I need to play bass for a few songs. There's an acoustic medley in the middle of the set where I put down my electric guitar and I pick up the bass guitar. We don't have a live bass player in the show. The bass is all on pre-recorded tracks. But for the acoustic section, I do play bass, and I needed a good five string for that. All of the basses I currently have are four strings, which is fine, but I just, you know, I kind of needed a five string for it. Uh, so I reached out to Harley Benton to see what they recommended, and this is what they recommended. For £300, this is absolutely mind-blowing. It was literally ready to go out the box. I've not even changed anything about it. I've not changed the strings. I've not changed the setup. The only thing I did was when it arrived, I stretched the strings to keep them in tune, and away I go. It literally is the same spec as it was the day it arrived. Absolutely fantastic bass in a stunning colour. I love the colour on this thing. It's really cool, it's got an active EQ, it's got a blend control for the pickups, it's got a, uh, that's turning the active EQ on and off, it's a coil split for the humbucker, it's very versatile, a ton of great tones. I love this thing. So yeah, check out the video for this, which is also going to be linked below. This is a great five string, and yeah, I mean, I'm blown away by how good this thing and I'm blown away by how good this thing plays and sounds considering the price point that it fits into. Next up, I'm torn between two pedals. I wanted to mention something from Jupiter Effects on this list because I always love the stuff that Chris sends me. I'm torn between two pedals that he sent me this year. Chris has sent me a few pedals this year, but these two, I can't decide which one I like more. So on one hand, I've got the Jupiter Effects Catastrophe. This is like a JCM 800 or 900 in a box with an octave up on the boost side, because why not? And this one is the Warlow. This is kind of like a Big Muff. Chris has taken the Big Muff. This is really interesting because I don't like Big Muff circuits but I genuinely loved this. This is kind of his take on that, but with a few different tweaks. I mean, yeah, this is a fuzz that I really got on well with. I wasn't 100% sold on the idea of doing a video for this because I don't like Big Muff circuits, but Chris was, you know, he told me, you will like it, I think you'll like it, I know your playing style, I know you, I think you'll enjoy it, and he was right. So I can't decide between these two. I love both of these things. This is a great high gain pedal, great for kind of 80s rock, 80s metal kind of stuff, and the octave up boost is just fun. And this is just fun because it's a fuzz, because who doesn't love fuzz? So Jupiter Effects, Warlow, Catastrophe, both great. I can't decide which one I like more. 
So if you've watched both of those videos, I'd like to hear which one you guys would pick. Another pedal up next, this is one that I haven't actually made a video on yet, but I've used constantly since I got it. TC Electronics Plethora X3. The guys at TC gave this to me at 42 Gear Street this year. I love TC stuff. I've been a big fan of TC Electronics for, I mean, probably 10 years or so. I remember buying a lot of the old kind of small tone print pedals, which I still have in my collection somewhere, when I was kind of gigging and looking for great kind of mini pedals to put on a board. I've always had a soft spot for TC. They've made some of my favorite pedals over the years. So to have access to, you know, essentially a lot of my favorite pedals in one box is great. The Plethora X3 is incredible. It's got so much stuff in there. It's basically every single TC tone print pedal in one box. So it's got choruses, it's got reverb, delay, it's got, you know, flanger, phaser, compressor. There's a pitch shifter in there. There is an octaver in there. There's a noise gate in there. There's a ton of stuff. It's a fantastic unit. Pretty much everything you need in a multi-effects pedal, minus gain circuits. But then you can just pair it with your favorite overdrives anyway. So this is definitely up there as one of the coolest things I've tried this year. And the final thing on the list is the Blackstar Amped 1. Now, as you guys know, if you watch the channel, I've been using Blackstar stuff for quite a while. I'm very much invested in what they do. I like the brand. I like the guys that work at the brand. I have a great relationship with them. They treat me great. And I do love the way that Blackstar products sound and feel and react to how I play. I've also been very familiar with some of the digital stuff over the last few years, like the Silverline series that you see behind me there in the middle. And also the Cabrig software, like the one that is in the Studio 10, not the Studio 10, the St. James 606. That's the Studio 10 606, which was my favorite amp before the St. James showed up. So I'm familiar with their Cabrig stuff. I'm familiar with their kind of digital Silverline stuff. So I kind of knew this was going to be pretty good at the box because the Amped 1, for anyone who hasn't seen this yet, you can check out my full-length video on this. This is essentially an amp in a box. But the, the way that I kind of see this is it's basically like a Silverline amp or like an ID core amp in the sense of we've got the tube amp responses here where we can choose different tube amp, you know, kind of power amp responses from like 606, the L34 and so on. We've got, you know, reverb, three band EQ, UK, USA or flat voice. It's pretty much like an amp in a box. It doesn't have a ton of gain. It's sort of designed more as a clean platform, which is great because that works for me. But you can also use this to output 1, 20 or 100 watts into a live cabinet. And it's also got an XLR output on the side, which uses Blackstar Digital Cabrig emulation. So it's like an amp in a box that you can use to power a real cabinet, or you can go direct into the PA with this off your pedal board. What a great unit. I mean, I knew this was going to be pretty good, but I was actually blown away by just how good it was and, and kind of the range and depth of the sounds that I got from this thing. So this is definitely up there as one of the coolest things I've seen this year. This is really great from a gigging musician's perspective, because what I found with other amp in a box pedals or pedal sized amps as it were, is that I could never quite get the same sound that I was using at home in my studio from a real amp. Uh, because I've kind of built my sound up now around the Blackstar sound, this is actually great because this literally can sound like my St. James. 
So I haven't actually used this for a gig yet, but I'm pretty certain this is going to see some live action in the next year because I've got a lot of travel dates and I'm pro pretty sure there's going to be some that I can't take my full rig for. So when I do need to take a much more scaled down rig, this is going to be going on my board and I'm literally going to be able to take my sound that I get from my Black Stars anywhere with me. I love this thing. Here's how this thing sounds in action. <laughs> All right, there we go. There are my top 10 products and a bit of a recap from 2022. Just have to say thank you guys again for all the support you've given me over the last year and anyone who's been here since the start of the journey. Thank you for sticking with it for so long as well. I'm looking forward to 2023. It's already lined up to be a very busy year. I'm going to be on the road a lot, but as I was saying, my road time now is confined more to Friday and Saturday nights, which is great because I'm home all week, which means more time for videos. So yeah, there's going to be plenty more of this stuff in the next year. As always, if there's any type of content you guys would like to see me create on the channel, anything you think you'd enjoy seeing on this channel, let me know. I'm always interested in hearing what you guys want from the channel as well. Thank you all so much for the support. I hope everyone watching this has a great Christmas, a great new year, and I'll see you guys in January 2023 for another busy year. Thank you guys as always again, and I'll see you next year.